Welcome to the Prison Professors Podcast. We serve people who face challenges with prosecution, sentencing, and prison. My co-founders are Sean Hopwood and Justin Paperni. My name is Michael Santos. We create digital content and our team offers individual consulting services. We also assist agencies that want to improve outcomes. To learn how we can help you, text the word Prison Pro to 44222. Again, text Prison Pro to 44222 and get our free brochure. You can also visit us at prisonprofessors.com or contact Justin at 818 424 2220. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. Send confirmation that you have rated our Prison Professors podcast. Leave us a review and we'll send you a free digital book. We'll work hard to earn five stars. Stay tuned for a 20 to 30 minute episode with Prison Professors. If you've been listening to the past four episodes, you know that we have been offering a series to help those who want to prepare for prison. Learn how to master it quickly by following the guidance we offered. The first episode in the series explained the process of going in. In the second episode, we offered insight on how to influence the right decision makers. In the third episode, we covered custody and classification. And in the previous episode of the series, we spoke about the importance of preparing. Today brings our fifth and final episode in the series. We continue the theme of preparing, but this time we emphasize how a personal narrative can help. Instead of complaining about going into prison, start writing the next chapter of your life. According to the Department of Justice, grand juries or prosecutors bring charges against more than 80,000 people every year. Statements made from our current Attorney General suggest that those numbers will rise during the Trump administration. Documentation published on the Department of Justice's website leads us to this conclusion, and we encourage you to check it out for yourself. Consider the memorandum that Jeff Sessions published on May 10th, 2017. Here's the title. Memorandum for All Federal Prosecutors. In the second paragraph of that memorandum, the Attorney General says, First, it is a core principle that prosecutors should charge and pursue the most serious, readily provable offense. The memorandum goes on to rescind previous policy decisions that gave more discretion to prosecutors. As a result, prosecutors will bring charges against more people. In light of the Sessions Memorandum, we anticipate prosecutors will initiate more grand jury proceedings, and those proceedings will lead to more criminal indictments. Prosecutors will also initiate charges through a process known as Rule 7B, a criminal information. With a criminal information, a person may waive indictment and simply agree to plead guilty to the charges a prosecutor brings. Whether it's an indictment or or a criminal information, at Prison Professors, we believe more people are going to prison. That's why our team publishes so much free information to help. Subscribe to our Prison Professors podcast so that you can learn while you drive, while you exercise, or wherever it suits you. Each of my partners at Prison Professors knows a great deal about being charged. We also know the facts. According to easily verifiable statistics, prison follows for the vast majority of people who face charges in federal court. Yet a federal prison term doesn't necessarily mean the end of the road. You got to start preparing. Staring down a lengthy prison term can bring a disheartening feeling. It's as if you're looking into an abyss. We've encountered many people who faced criminal charges. Many went to prison. Some of those people prospered in prison. Others fell into a deep hole. In segments that I uh, published earlier, I've given some initial insights about how to master prison quickly, and I'll continue doing so through our podcast. But we can offer instructions for days. To break it down simply, we recommend adhering to the same principles to succeed or overcome any other challenge. And there are specific steps to follow. Number one, visualize success. What's the best possible outcome? Create a plan. What steps will take you from where you are today to the success that you envision? Number three, set priorities. As I've mentioned earlier, it is crucial that you set incremental goals. 
know and understand that achieving one goal will put you on a pathway to achieving higher goals. And more to come on this subject in future episodes of our podcast. You've also got to execute the plan. If you don't execute the plan, you know, you're really nothing more than a guy that's talking about success, but you're not really pursuing the path. You got to have a plan, but without execution, it's nothing more than happy talk. Leaders take action every day. If you are following the prison professor's pathway, you will take action. You will climb from where you are today to the success that you are determined to become tomorrow. It's still, we recognize that it isn't easy. That's why I like to offer my story because a lot of times people say, wow, if this dude could go through 26 years in prison and still come back strong with his dignity intact, I can do the same thing. But statistics show that the vast majority of people face many struggles upon release. Others face struggles just going through the prison system. Some return to society and thrive, but as examples I've, 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 I've shown a lot of times, people come back into society or without any opportunities for success, or they make decisions in prison that result in their serving a sentence that is far more difficult than it had to be. I like to use my partners as examples of people who made the right decision. Our team shows people how to succeed through prison and beyond. And our personal experiences convince us that if we prepare early, we enhance our prospects for success. And we don't mean success on a marginal level. We mean success on multiple levels. You see, success is a mindset. The sooner we can adopt that mindset of success, the sooner we can advance prospects for success. So what do you do when you're getting ready to surrender to prison? Well, when prosecutors choose to bring charges against a defendant, life changes. We never know when the time will come for us to surrender. For example, in Justin's case, prosecutors brought charges against him, yet the judge didn't order the U.S. Marshals to take Justin into custody. He remained free on bond while his judicial proceedings played out. And his judge allowed him to surrender to federal prison voluntarily several months after he was officially charged. I think it was longer than a year. Now, in my case, authorities took me into custody on the day of my arrest. I'll always remember that day. I've written and spoken about it frequently. It was August the 11th, 1987. I was 23. Now, I'd never been to prison before. Yet the bad decisions I began making when I was 20, they caught up with me. I faced a sentence of multiple decades in prison. And I remained in custody until I concluded my sentence in a federal halfway house more than 26 years later, on August the 12th, 2013. Take another case, like that of Paul Manafort. A federal grand jury charged Mr. Manafort with several charges, including conspiracy against the United States and money laundering. After Manafort surrendered to face the charges, the the court placed Manafort under house arrest. Now that's a form of imprisonment. We heard about it from Scott Tucker, who told us about his journey on home confinement. After a month of house arrest, Mr. Manafort was able to pledge assets that would allow him to go free on bond until the charges were resolved. But I have no doubt, as, Paul, as Scott described in his story, time on house arrest is just like being a prison, in a prison. The only difference is it doesn't necessarily count against the sentence you're eventually going to receive. Now, we never know when authorities will require a defendant to surrender to prison. Yet we know that the sooner a person establishes a deliberate course of action, the sooner a person can stop the free fall that derails peace for so many people who are going into the prison system. In our previous episode, we encourage people to define success. We encourage them to remember the pathway to overcome challenges. For some people, challenges define the rest of their lives. For others, The way that they responded to challenges defines the rest of their lives. My question for you is which type of guy do you want to be? Do you want to be the kind of guy that faces a challenge and then just crumbles up in a corner and whimpers? Or do you want to be a guy that stands up, picks himself up, and finds a way through? We ask defendants, make a decision. Take a stand. Will you allow prison to define you or are you going to make decisions? 
that are going to show you have the power within to overcome. Now, the strategy that worked for us and that we encourage for so many others includes writing. You got to write a personal narrative. Write that narrative at the soonest possible time. If you don't know how to do it, find someone, find a mentor that can help you. And if possible, get that narrative into the pre-sentence investigation report. Let me explain why. You see, when authorities allege that someone has committed a crime, that crime can have a tendency to totally consume the person. Newspapers or media outlets may report on the crime. A Google search is going to reveal the criminal charge. The statement from prosecutors or other authorities is going to take on a life of its own. And if an individual doesn't do something about it, that story is going to become an immutable part of the character of the individual. Now, a personal narrative, that begins to counter the allegations. And an effective, skillful individual can learn how to use that narrative to open new opportunities. I did it time and time again. It opened so many opportunities for me in prison that it allowed me to come back to society strong with my dignity intact. You got to start writing the next chapter of your life. All of us are more than the decisions we made at the worst moment of our lives. And the sooner we begin to write out our personal narrative, the sooner we can begin to write the next chapter. If we don't do that, it's going to be the worst moment of our lives that everybody we encounter in the future is going to use to define us. Now, I learned this lesson of writing new chapters at the very start of my journey, and it made all the difference. I was still locked in the Pierce County Jail back in 1987. Authorities arrested me for leading a group that trafficked in cocaine, and when I got caught, the only thing I wanted was to get out of jail. As a result, I listened to every word my lawyer had to offer. He told me that there was a big difference between an indictment and a conviction. But anyone who knows how to research can find data that will undermine such a statement. You get indicted by the federal government, there's better than a 90% chance there's going to be a conviction. When the federal government indicts someone, a conviction follows more than 9 out of every 10 cases. You can live like an ostrich with your head in the sand if you want to, but the consequences are going to be far more severe for people who don't stand up, take a stand, take action, put themselves on a pathway to success. My lawyer told me what I wanted to hear rather than what I needed to hear. On the Prison Professors podcast, we're going to give it to you like we experienced it. Take it for what it's worth. But I can tell you, after a jury convicted me, I realized that I made a horrific decision with my life. At 20 years old, I started selling cocaine. At 23, the DEA arrested me. And once I was in jail, I made the decision to grow, to reach my highest potential in the environment where I would be held. That didn't start until after I was convicted, but before I was sentenced. Before I got sentenced, I made a decision to prepare in ways that would lead to success in prison and beyond. My challenge to you is start preparing before the conviction. Start preparing at the soonest possible time. If you're listening to this episode, if you've got a family or a friend or a loved one who's, who's potentially a target of a criminal investigation, that's when they got to start preparing because that's when you can move the needle. That's when you have the best chance to start ch- writing a new chapter. Now, it's never too early, and it's never too late. I, I didn't start until after I was sentenced to 45 years. But wherever you are in the journey, I encourage you, think about how you can start writing the next chapter of your life. If you want more information on it, check out our books on prisonprofessors.com. You'll read the story of my inspiring partner, Sean Hopwood. You'll read about Justin McPerney and his book. You can read about my story in different books. You can read our articles. But in this series, is not about us, it's about you and about creating the next start of your life. So start with a question. Are you ready to make changes? How badly do you want a better future? If you have been targeted for a criminal prosecution in federal court, the time to decide is now. How are you going to emerge 
from this struggle. Now, in my case, transformation began with introspection. Those are a couple of big syllable words. But by thinking about my past, I could begin to connect the dots. Authorities locked me in prison because a jury convicted me of crimes related to selling cocaine. Introspection gave me a broader perspective. By reflecting on my past, I could see that I began going astray long before I started selling cocaine. My life went off course way before the authorities arrested me for for selling drugs. Decisions I made much earlier put me on a course for a bad outcome. No one could change that outcome but me. And I started to change that outcome with my personal narrative. I had to write out who is the person that I aspired to become. But in order to write that out, I had to really understand what got me to the situation I was in. Consider my partners. They have a similar story. I didn't know Sean when he started serving his sentence. I know that he was young. I know that he had longer than a decade to serve because he pleaded guilty to a series of armed bank robberies. Yet rather than allowing those bank robberies to define him, Sean began crafting a new narrative for his life. And no one dismisses Sean because of his bank robbery convictions. He's a lawyer. He's a law professor. He is uh, an advocate for policy change and reform. Legislators on Capitol Hill call him in. He's been all over the country speaking about how to build a better prison system, a better sentencing system. Sean's the ambassador of prisonprofessors.com. How did all that happen? It happened because he started writing a new chapter of his life. Well, you can do the same. Justin did it. I met Justin inside the Taft Federal Prison Camp back in 2008. And when we met, I had more than 20 years of prison behind me, but he was just starting. And like many people coming into prison, he felt lost the day he surrendered. He'd been a stockbroker, an asset manager. He defined himself as an athlete and a graduate from USC in his profession as a financial services professional. But authorities gave Justin a completely different narrative. He pleaded guilty to securities fraud. And when he joined me in federal prison, he felt the weight of his past crushing his spirit. He didn't know what he would do with the rest of his life. But then he learned the secret, the same secret that worked for me. It powered me through 9,500 days, and it could empower Justin. It all began with writing his narrative. He had to begin writing the next chapter of his life. Otherwise, he would always be living with that wretched message that he was a convicted felon. Now, when we first started talking about it, he didn't understand what, what I meant when I said writing it out. But then we got to work. We sat side by side each morning. I showed him how introspection empowered me and how I could lead anyone through a difficult situation from struggle to prosperity. It's a lesson that leaders have taught for thousands of years. Scholars attribute the following saying to Socrates, one of the mentors that really inspired me. He said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Well, in reality, all lives are worth living. Yet I found enormous strength in the power of reflection. I showed Justin how lessons from Socrates and other philosophers empowered me through multiple decades in federal prison. He agreed that introspection could put him on a path to a better life. And so we worked together, side by side. He wrote his narrative, and that commitment to writing resulted in the book Lessons from Prison. It launched an entirely new life for Justin. So success through prison begins with a path. We encourage anyone facing a prison journey, use the same recipe to prepare for success that worked for us. Write a narrative that will become the new chapter of your life. At Prison Professors, we don't ask anyone to do anything that we didn't do or that we're not doing today. Sean's book reveals how much thought he put into his future. Justin's book shows what he learned through introspection. During the 26 years that I served, I wrote extensively. I published several books under my name and many more books that I ghost wrote for other people. But besides writing my own books, I interviewed people. I learned about their stories and I worked side by side with them to help them introspect and to help them write the next chapter of their life. That's why I know it works. A magical process unfolds through these exercises in introspection and writing. It brings clarity of thought. We feel empowered. 
we begin to see the patterns that led us to where we are today. And by documenting our journeys, we can take control of our destiny. We can set our lives on a new course. This process can show the how and the why of our lives. We are who we are today because of the decisions that we made yesterday. And at any time, we can begin making new decisions, and those new decisions will redefine our life. Personal narratives are the start. They will launch us on a new journey. Those who choose not to write their own narratives should understand what's going to transpire. Prosecutorial statements will have a longer life. From directives and sessions memorandum, we know that prosecutors are going to bring the worst possible charges. We also know that there is much more to every individual's life than those charges. The question is whether a person wants to write a narrative that begins to show sow those seeds for the next chapter, or whether the individual is going to allow the statements from prosecutors to influence his future. At Prison Professors, we urge our clients to prepare personal narratives at the soonest possible time. Some defendants feel so disoriented from the criminal charge that they just can't muster the concentration to write their own narratives. So, use one of our courses. Learn how the process works. Learn how to do it for yourself. We introduce them to our courses on writing the narratives because we know that sometimes people need that nudge. And in some cases, people just need somebody to do the whole process for them, and we're more than happy to help those who can bring us on as a member of their team. But the personal narrative isn't something that can be done in an hour, in two hours. It takes a lot of thought because you're trying to convey who you were, where you are, and what you're going to become. And this personal narrative can serve several purposes. By writing the narrative early, you can start putting stakeholders in the system with a, 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 start notifying them that you're going to be different. You're going to give them a different perspective. And some defense attorneys may use those narratives as tools to influence the prosecutorial process. They may use the narrative to show why you're worthy of lower charges, of a downward departure, or maybe an alternative sentence. You can use this personal narrative as a tool to influence a pre-sentence investigation. After a defendant pleads guilty or after a jury convicts someone, the next step is for the person to meet with a probation officer. And that probation officer is going to conduct that investigation. And that investigation will finish with a report known as the PSI or the PSR. Now, during that investigation, the probation officer is going to ask you whether you have anything to say about the offense. A good written narrative will show how much thought you've put into this before you got into the system. That narrative can have enormous influence on the journey ahead. Don't take my word for it. You know, we always encourage our clients, listen to what federal judges have said. We've interviewed many federal judges, and some of those judges have agreed to appear on our YouTube channel. And I ask them questions about what can a defendant do to move the needle at sentencing. I can tell you what the judges say. They say, that I am more interested in the defendant's version of events, what he's learned from the process. I want to know who he is and what influences led him to stand before me in federal court. Because up until the defendant presents his version of events, I don't really have any credible sources to turn to. I know the prosecutor is bringing charges, and as Attorney General Sessions has said, he's going to bring the worst possible charges. And then I know the defense attorney. The defense attorney is going to, you know, basically be focusing on the law. If the defendant doesn't take the time to write his story, the judge is never going to know him. And then if he doesn't know him, he doesn't find really a compelling reason to exercise his discretion and grant mercy. But it's never too late and it's never too early to begin preparing for success. You can write your personal narrative before you surrender to prison. You can write your narrative once you're in prison. Either way, I absolutely know and my partners absolutely know your narrative is going to help you. It's going to help you clarify thoughts. It's going to lead a person to define success. And once you have that definition of success, you can start reverse engineering. 
and you can modify it along the way. But the personal narrative, use it as a tool to motivate yourself, to get up, to make things happen. You've got to visualize success. You've got to set the plan. You've got to have your priorities in place and you have to execute the plan. Although a criminal indictment or a conviction can feel like the end of the world and a long sentence can feel like, oh my God, I don't know how I'm going to get through it. I can tell you that a personal narrative is going to put you on a pathway to recalibration. It's going to restore your confidence. It's going to restore your self-esteem because you are going to know that regardless of what external influences are going on outside, you are making decisions that's going to define your life. That strategy helped my partner, Sean. That strategy helped my partner, Justin. And that strategy worked for me. Now, we also encourage people to recognize that the process doesn't end with a sentencing hearing. After sentencing, you're going to surrender to prison or they're going to take you into prison. Then a series of authorities are going to judge you at different intervals. And those authorities are always going to look to the PSR or the prosecutor statements when assessing you. But if you write your narrative, if you can get it into the record, you can influence those eventual assessments. You can make a stronger case for yourself. You see, prison, you're always going to be making the biggest sale of your life. Sow the seeds. Give yourself all the tools that you need to make a stronger, more compelling, persuasive, influential case. The strategy of writing out a personal narrative had an enormous influence on my journey. If I had undergone the exercise of introspection and writing the narrative earlier, I would have made different decisions. And better decisions would have meant that I didn't have to serve 26 years in prison. But again, it's never too early and it's never too late to start sowing seeds for a better life. I wrote my narrative before I surrendered to prison. It was after I was convicted, but before I was sentenced. And because of that narrative, I could influence the way that case managers in prison assessed me. I could influence where I served my sentence. I could influence what programs I could complete in prison. I could influence my level of liberty in prison. And I could influence when authorities would release me to a halfway house. And once I concluded my sentence, I used those personal narratives to influence the level of liberty I would have on supervised release. It influenced the career I launched, and it persuaded authorities to advocate for my early termination of supervised release. So in conclusion, I want you to expect prosecutors to paint the worst possible picture of you. As Jeff Sessions wrote in his memorandum, those prosecutors have a job, and they consider that job proving the most serious charge. Justice in the eyes of many prosecutors, is going to equate with convictions and long sentences. For people who want a better outcome, write a new narrative. Start today. Use these narratives as blueprints for your life. They can lead to you building the future that you want to create. They can lead to the next phase in the journey. They are essential to getting the outcome you want from this prison experience. So if you're a person who wants to redefine your life, then start with the narrative. Do it today. Do it soon. The sooner you start, the more time you can have to invest and to rewrite it and craft it well. Make it exactly, make it a pathway that's going to lead you to what you want to become. Don't write the narrative to sell. You know, this isn't a document to sell to readers. Rather, the narrative is to sell you to all the people who are going to meet you in the future, including probation officers, judges, uh, case managers in the Bureau of Prisons, um, halfway house people. You know, you might want to apply for clemency someday. All of this, all of the, all, whether you get it or not, is going to depend on how well you're prepared. Now, in the episodes that follow, I'm going to describe a bit more about how our team refined this strategy. We use narratives to help us define success. We want you to write a narrative so that you can start defining success. This is the essential lesson of prison professors. It's that you have the power within to recalibrate your life, to restore your confidence, to give new meaning, and you can do it when you start writing the next chapter. 
So that concludes our series on of five episodes on how to prepare for prison. Um, stay tuned. I hope that you subscribe to the Prison Professors podcast and that you rate and review the show. I hope that you uh, find some value in our YouTube channel, that you subscribe to that as well, that you follow us and like us on Facebook. If you uh, want to learn how we can help you, text the word prison. Pro. That's P R I S O N P R O. Text Prison Pro to 44222. That's text Prison Pro to 44222, and we will show how we can help you. I am Michael Sanchez with PrisonProfessors.com I, and the Prison Professors podcast. Stick around. I've got some exciting interviews with some awesome dudes that are coming up on our program, and uh, we just look forward to sharing what we've learned with you. Thank you.